Ever wondered why the Germans destroyed their own fleet after World War I? The event in question is indeed an intriguing one. It's not every day that a nation decides to scuttle, to sink its own military vessels. Now, one could chalk it up to mere desperation or defeat. But as is often the case, reality is far more complex. Multiple factors, some quite unexpected, converged to lead to this drastic decision. Stay with us as we unravel this fascinating piece of history. To understand this historical event, we must first travel back to the end of World War I. The year is 1918, and the world breathes a collective sigh of relief as the Great War ends. The war-weary nations are eager for peace, leading to the signing of the Treaty of Versailles the following year. The treaty however is not a document of peace for everyone. For Germany, it represents a harsh reality check. The country is forced to accept full responsibility for the war, leading to severe financial reparations that cripple its economy. But the financial burden is not the only consequence Germany faces. One of the most critical aspects of the Treaty of Versailles is the military restrictions imposed on Germany. The treaty demands Germany to disarm significantly, especially its navy. The once formidable German high seas fleet, which had been a symbol of German military might, is reduced to a shadow of its former self. The treaty allows Germany to retain only six pre-dreadnought battleships, six light cruisers, and 12 destroyers. Submarines, the silent killers of the sea, are completely forbidden. The German Navy's strength is effectively neutered. The German Navy, once the pride of the nation, is humiliated. Its power and prestige are stripped away, leaving the sailors and officers in a state of despair and indignation. The morale of the Navy plummets, and the sailors feel betrayed by their own country, which they believe has abandoned them in the face of the Allies' demands. This feeling of betrayal and humiliation becomes a simmering cauldron of resentment, waiting for the right moment to boil over. And so, the stage is set. The German Navy, crippled and humiliated, left with little more than a handful of ships. The sailors, bitter and resentful, feeling betrayed and abandoned. The world, oblivious to the brewing storm. The stage was set for a decision that would shock the world. June 21, 1919. A day that would forever be etched in naval history. In the chill of the Orkney Islands off the northern coast of Scotland, the waters of Scapa Flow harbored an unusual sight. The mighty German high seas fleet, once a symbol of German naval power was interned here, a ghostly remnant of a war that had ravaged the world. The fleet had been confined here since the signing of the armistice in November 1918, a pawn in the tense negotiations that would ultimately lead to the Treaty of Versailles. The Allied powers, particularly Britain, held the fleet as a guarantee of German compliance with the peace terms. At the helm of the interned fleet was Admiral Ludwig von Reuter, a man torn between duty and a desperate situation. As days turned into months, Reuter found himself in a precarious position. The armistice was due to expire, with no clear indication of what the fate of his beloved fleet would be. With a heavy heart, Reuter made a decision that would shock the world. On that fateful day in June, he sent out an order to his captains, scuttle the fleet. He would rather see his ships rest at the bottom of Scapa Flow than fall into enemy hands. Imagine the scene, the water churning as seacocks and flood valves were opened, the ships slowly succumbing to the sea, sailors scrambling for lifeboats, the air filled with the sound of tearing metal and the cries of seagulls. It was a sight that no one present would ever forget. Reuter's decision was not taken lightly. He acted to preserve the honor of the German Navy, believing that to surrender his fleet was to betray his country and his men. He chose instead to scuttle the fleet, an act that would echo through the annals of naval history. In a matter of hours, 52 ships of the German fleet sank to the bottom of the sea. The sinking of the fleet at Scapa Flow sent shockwaves around the globe. The immediate aftermath was a chaotic whirl of activity. Men scrambled to rescue the trapped German sailors from the icy waters of the North Sea. Many lives were lost but countless others were saved by the quick actions of British and German sailors alike. As news of the incident spread, the international community reacted with a mix of shock, disbelief and outrage. How could a nation's own navy orchestrate such a colossal act of self-destruction? The answer lay in pride, defiance, and a refusal to let their ships fall into enemy hands. In France, the incident stoked the fires of resentment still smoldering from the war. It was seen as a direct affront, a blatant violation of the armistice agreement. The British for their part, were torn between anger 
and admiration for the audacity of the Germans. But the repercussions extended far beyond immediate reactions. The incident had a profound effect on the ongoing Treaty of Versailles negotiations. The Allies, already grappling with how to deal with a defeated Germany, now had to contend with this unexpected twist. Germany, for its part, used the incident to its advantage. The scuttling was portrayed as a heroic act of defiance, a final stand against the Allied forces. It bolstered national pride at a time when it was desperately needed. The loss of the German fleet also had practical implications. The Allies had intended to divide the German ships amongst themselves as part of the war reparations, with the majority of the fleet now lying at the bottom of the sea, this was no longer possible. This forced a re-evaluation of the reparation terms, and undoubtedly influenced the final shape of the Treaty of Versailles. The reverberations of Scapa Flow incident didn't stop at the end of the negotiations. The bold act of defiance would serve as a rallying point for German nationalism in the years to come. It was a symbol of resistance, a reminder of the spirit that refused to be defeated. The ripples of this event would be felt for years to come. But why does this event matter? What can we learn from it? The Scapa Flow incident, as fascinating as it is, isn't just a footnote in history. It holds profound implications that echo to this day, shaping our understanding of naval warfare, international relations, and the very fabric of history itself. In the realm of naval warfare, this event marked a turning point. The destruction of the German high seas fleet was not just a loss of military assets, it was an act of defiance, a bold statement that reverberated across the seas. It affirmed that a navy, the backbone of a nation's defense, would not be used as a bargaining chip in peace treaties. The incident set a precedent, influencing how naval assets are treated in international agreements even today. In terms of international relations, the Scapa Flow incident was a stark reminder of the unpredictable nature of global conflict and its aftermath. The undercurrents of resentment and bitterness that led to the scuttling of the fleet laid bare the difficulties in achieving genuine peace. It highlighted the need for clear diplomatic communication and the importance of understanding and addressing the concerns of all parties involved in a conflict. In the wake of the incident, the world witnessed the rise of more comprehensive and inclusive diplomacy, an approach that is still upheld in international relations. Lastly, the Scapa Flow incident holds a unique place in history. It serves as a stark reminder that history is not merely a sequence of events, but a complex tapestry woven from individual decisions, actions, and consequences. It underlines the fact that even in defeat, a nation can exert influence and shape the course of history. The Scapa Flow incident is more than a tale of a defeated fleet's last act of defiance. It's a story that offers us insights into the complexities of war, the nuances of diplomacy, and the unpredictable nature of historical events. The Scapa Flow incident serves as a stark reminder of the complexities and often unexpected consequences of global conflict. So there you have it, the story behind Germany's decision to destroy its own fleet after World War I. The end of the Great War brought about a period of uncertainty and tension. The world powers convened, crafting the Treaty of Versailles with the hope of securing lasting peace. Yet this treaty was, in many ways, a catalyst for further conflict. It left Germany in a precarious situation, stripped of its military might and saddled with the blame and financial burden for the war. The Scapa Flow incident was a direct consequence of these circumstances. It was a bold act of defiance by the German high seas fleet, choosing to scuttle their ships rather than surrender them to the Allies. This act, while seemingly self-destructive, was a strategic move and a statement of national pride, leaving the Allies with fewer spoils of war. Yet, the Scapa Flow incident was not an isolated event. It is a piece of the broader historical puzzle, shedding light on the interwar period and the lead-up to World War II. It was a testament to the tensions simmering below the surface, the unresolved issues of the Treaty of Versailles, and the lengths nations would go to preserve their honor. History is full of surprising events and the Scapa Flow incident is surely one of them.